Welcome back everyone to Learning with Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 15.115, okay? So it says the chute is used to, do, to divert the flow of water Q equal to 0.6 meter Q per second. If the water has a cross-sectional area of 0.05 meters square, determine the force components at the pin D and roller C necessary for equilibrium. Neglect the weight of the chute and the weight of the water on the chute. We are also giving them the density of water is equal to one megagrams per meter cube. All right. So what we see here is that we see this chute, which is this orange shape, uh, let's call it L shape uh, material. So it's all in order to change the basically the direction of from vertical to horizontal. And we see that we have water entering at point A and water exiting at point B. Okay. Now we have a roller at C and a pin at D, and we're asked to determine what are the forces in order for equilibrium in this um, in this system. So the first thing I like to do is just let's just start by simply writing out my givens. So I got that Q is equal to by my flow is equal to 0 0.6 meter cube per second. Then I have my cross sectional area, so I'm going to name it AC is equal to 0 0.05 meter square okay then lastly I have that the row of my water my density is equal to one megagram I'm going to convert this one megagram to kilogram so it will be a thousand kilograms per meter cube okay so these are my givens and since we're in chapter 15 in steady flow we're going to utilize those equations given in this chapter, which are 1525 and 1526, okay? Where we see that we are going to apply the sum of forces, since we want to know the forces, right? At this component C and D, we're going to apply the sum of forces that, and this should be equal to dm dt multiplied by the velocity minus the velocity of A. Okay, same, very similarly, sum of moments, we have dm dt, and the difference between the force will be multiplying it by the distance well of each respectly velocity okay now as i said both of these equations needs this dm dt and we have the equation for dm dt being basically the the density of water multiplied by the flow okay so let's just start ahead and just find out that one very quick i'm going to do it over here we have the dm dt is going to be equal to the density which is a thousand multiplied by the flow which is 0 0.6 and this should give me a total of 600 and the units should be in kilograms per second okay so we know that we now know that this is equal to 600 so when we utilize this equation okay so since we're going to do this summatorial of forces and summatorial of moments, the best thing to do this is by uh, doing a free body diagram. So um, let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram of my system. So my system looks something similarly like, um, let me redraw it like this, right? And we have I'm going to displace the forces in red. So the first thing is that I have a force in the x direction at point Z. So I'm going to call it CX. And the reason for that is that this roller will act kind of like a surface at that point. We have a pin connection at D. So we're going to replace that with two forces, force DY and also the force DX. Okay, so basically we're going back to our statics class. Now I'm going to write my velocities in in blue. Well, we have the velocity of a going down like this, and I also have the velocity of b going to my right at the end of this. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is just write my distances from point C to my point D. I got two meters. And from my point A to my point D, I got a distance of 1.5 meters. Okay, so I believe this is all we need for this free body diagram. I'm going to slightly move this a little bit down, just so 
we have a little bit more space and we can start by doing the summatorial moments and you will see why I'm choosing to start by first doing a summatorial moment about my point D okay so this summatorial moments should be equal to the MDT which we already know multiply by the distance of B with respect to my point D that we're interested times the velocity of B minus the distance of A times the velocity of A and the reason why I'm choosing to start doing the summatorial moments around my point D is that well the forces that I have are CX, DY and DX so if I do a moment around my point D the distance dy doesn't have any distance and the distance dx doesn't have any distance from my point d right so the only force unknown will be cx so that's something very good to have only one unknown we're going to have that counterclockwise is positive okay so let's start with that as i mentioned before cx will be the only force therefore we're going to have cx multiplied by the distance well this is the line of action of CX and my point D is in here. Therefore, the distance is from here to here and it's these two meters over here, multiplied by two. Is this moment negative or positive? Well, we're holding at point D, right? And we're pushing my system like that. Therefore, I will want to rotate clockwise. Therefore, my moment is negative. Now, this that's the only moment I have the, with respect to in my forces, right? About my point D. Therefore, I can say that this is equal to the MDT, which we found before to be 600, multiplied by, well, what is this RV? Well, RV is the distance from B to D, the distance of my velocity, okay? So now, as we can see, the velocity of B passes right exactly at D. At my point D over here, right? It's better if we see it over here in the original picture. What we can see is that the velocity passes right in through my point D. Therefore, there is no distance, and this is going to be equal to zero. Minus the distance from A, velocity of A, to my point D. Well, let's go ahead again to the original picture, and we can over exaggerate this line of action. And what we can see is that from point D to this line of action, we have the 1.5 meters minus the 0 0.12 meters that are given in here, okay? So that's going to be equal to uh, 1.38. So we got 1.38 multiplied by the velocity of A. Now, what is this velocity of A? So the velocity of A can be found by knowing that the flow, the amount of flow, divided by the cross-sectional area. Well, we know the flow and we know the cross-sectional area. So let's go ahead. I'm actually going to do this a little bit above. So I'm going to move this downward and we're going to say that the velocity of A is equal to my flow divided by my cross-sectional area. Well, this is equal to 0 0.6 for my flow divided by my 0 0.05 in the cross-sectional area. If I plug this into my calculator, this will give me a 12 and the units should be in meters per second. Another thing I want to highlight is that, well, the cross-sectional area at A is the same as the cross-sectional area at B. Therefore, our velocities should be the same. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is also equal to the velocity of B. Now that we have this, well, basically, um, we just put it into our equation, velocity of A is 12, we multiply and we close our parentheses. The last thing I'm going to do is basically solve for CX. This is going to be equal to 600 multiplied by 1.38 multiplied by 12 and all of these are going to be divided by two. If we plug this into our calculator, let's see how much we get. We'll get a total of 4,000 nine hundred and sixty eight and the units should be newts. I want you guys to check out that this minus and this minus will basically cancel out and therefore my answer is positive okay uh, I can also put this as 4.97 kilonewtons if I desire to have my units in kilonewtons 
Well, now that we have the summatory of moments, what I have left is summatory of forces, right? So I will do the summatory of forces. I'm going to start with the summatory of forces in the x direction. Assuming that going to the right is positive, this should be equal to dm dt multiplied by the velocity of b minus the velocity of a. Okay, so what forces do we have in the x direction? Well, we have cx and we have dx. So we got cx plus dx has to be equal to dm dt is equal to 600 multiplied by the velocity of b in the x direction because we're talking about the x direction. Well, the velocity of b is everything on the x direction and as I mentioned before, it's equal to 12 minus the velocity of a. Well, the velocity of a, everything is downwards, meaning that we got nothing in the x direction. All right. So as we can see in here, well, the only unknown I have is dx. So I'm going to solve for dx is equal to 600 multiplied by 12 minus cx. Well, cx is 4968. And if I plug this into my calculator, I'll find out that my answer is equal to 2,232, okay? Um, I can convert this, in, uh, this is newtons, and I can convert this also into kilonewtons, which is going to be 2.23 kilonewtons. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is summatory of forces in the y direction, assuming that going up is positive. So we have the summatory of forces in the y is equal to dm dt times the velocity of b minus the velocity of a okay so in the y direction let's look at our free body diagram well in the y direction i only have dy therefore dy is the only force i have has to be equal to dm dt which is 600 multiplied by the velocity of b in the y direction let's recall this is in the y direction okay so zero right so we got zero minus the velocity of a well the velocity of a everything is going down and is equal to 12 as we found before however this velocity is negative because it's going downwards let's recall i'm assuming that going up is positive so this minus and this minus will cancel out we have positive 12 so 600 times 12 is equal to 7200 newtons okay same thing again, I can change this to 7.20 kilonewtons. And we just found out the force for dy, the force for dx, and the force for cx. So I hope you guys like this video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.